How's it going everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. Today's video is going to be on lift. A very important video for pilots to understand. You got to know how your aircraft creates lift so that you can maintain it in all situations. I just want to mention that I'm giving out a free study guide for the FA Private Pilot Written. It's over 170 slides long. It's really great. A lot of good information. Just look at the link in my description. Go to that link and download the study guide for free. All you need to do is put in your email. All right, let's get started. Okay, so lift. Lift, there's a lot of different explanations out there for lift. The truth is it's a little complicated and there's multiple contributions to lift. So there's multiple explanations that combine to create the force of lift. Let's get to them. The first one is Newton's third law. I'm sure you've heard of it, but if not, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, a classic example of this is, let's say you're standing on a little boat by a dock and you're jumping out of the boat you're pushing off the boat to get onto the dock as you step off and push yourself off to get onto the dock the boat moves away from you so your action is pushing off to get onto the dock the reaction is the boat moving away from you that's why you see a lot of people fall into the water when they're trying to get on a dock okay for aircraft the perfect example is thrust and forward movement of the aircraft the propeller spins through the air and essentially pushes the air backward with the resulting motion of the aircraft moving forward, okay? Also, another good example is a rocket engine. This is actually a very clear example. That's why I chose it for the visualization. So, so in our rocket nozzle, so here's our rocket, we have a bunch of fuel in here, okay? The fuel is mixed and it's burned and it's thrown out of the rocket at very high speeds. All right. Now what that does, so you have an action throwing out masses of burnt fuel propellant and you have a reaction of the engine that's attached to the rocket propelling forward. That's Newton's third law as it pertains to aerospace vehicles and even airplanes with a common propeller. The second contribution to lift I want to talk about is described by Bernoulli's principle. So Bernoulli's principle is a mathematical principle that relates the pressure of a moving fluid with its velocity. What it says is that as the velocity of a fluid increases, the pressure of that fluid decreases and vice versa. So if the velocity decreases, the pressure would increase. For airplanes, this fluid is air. A fluid is a gas or a liquid. So for airplanes, this is air. So what does this equation look like? So essentially, it's a combination of the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure equaling the total pressure, which remains constant. So imagine the total pressure remaining constant. So you have the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure equaling the total pressure, which is a constant. Now, if you want to know the differences between static pressure and dynamic pressure, click on the video that's popping up in the top right i go over the differences between that and how your aircraft instruments use those values so you have the static pressure plus the dynamic pressure which is a function of the velocity so it's the density of the air times the velocity squared of the air divided by two but for now just know static pressure plus dynamic pressure equals total pressure which is a constant Okay, so if this is constant all the time, that means it's always the same. Let's say it's 10. And the static pressure, let's say is, let's say the static pressure is five. Okay, that makes the dynamic pressure five. Five plus five equals 10. Now if this, because this is constant, it can't change from 10. And the, let's say the static pressure were to change, were to go up to eight. What does that mean that this term, the dynamic pressure, has to do? It has to go down for this to equal 10. It can't be 5 anymore. It can't go up. That would be more than 10. It has to be 2. Okay, so it went down. What's happening here is the velocity is going down. The density of the air is not changing, mostly. It's usually staying the same. So the velocity is going down. So how does this look? Let's look at this more visually. So here we have a hypothetical nozzle where we have an area of A1 here with air entering at velocity V1 and pressure P1. Okay, so this is station one. 
as the air flows through here, it gets constricted by the area of the nozzle at station two. So the area, cross-sectional area at station two is smaller than area one. This causes the velocity to increase. So V2 is higher than V1. Now, according to Bernoulli, what happens when the velocity increases? The pressure decreases. So P2 is smaller than P1. Okay, so how does all this, how does Newton and Bernoulli, how does this, how does this explain a propeller aircraft creating lift? Let's get into that. So here we have a picture of an airfoil. So this is the brown shape here in our picture. The airfoil is a cross-section, sh cross-sectional shape of our wing. We have this airfoil at an angle of attack between the free stream line here and the cord line here. So angle of attack. Now as the air approaches this wing, it splits. Some of the air goes below the wing and some of the air travels above the wing. The first contribution to lift, the air below the wing, so we're talking about this blue line here, changes direction due to the positive angle of attack of the wing. So it comes in, it hits the wing, but because the wing's at a positive angle of attack, it bounces off the wing and travels along the bottom of the wing. This change in direction, according to Newton, has an opposite reaction on the wing itself. So it pushes the wing this way. So the resulting motion is this way, but this has a vertical component as well as a horizontal component, but this vertical, com vertical component we relate to lift. The second contribution to lift the air traveling above the wing, so now we're talking about this green line here, the air traveling above the wing is also turned and follows the curve shape of the airfoil. So it turns and follows this shape, finally traveling down by the end of the wing. So at the trailing edge of the wing, it's now pointing downwards. This change of direction downwards has an opposite reaction according to Newton's third law. So the opposite reaction of the wing would be this way, which again has a vertical component as well as a horizontal component, but this vertical component relates to lift. Again, described by Newton's third law. The third and final contribution to lift can be described by Bernoulli's principle. It gets a little tough, so hang with me. So the air above and below the wing are at different pressures. To explain how they got to different pressures, we have, let's think about them individually. The air above the wing, it has a lower pressure because the front of the wing is blocking it from oncoming air. So we're talking about the air right back here. The oncoming air is coming in and it's getting blocked by the front of the wing, such that the air back here does not feel that dynamic pressure of the air. Think about you're riding on a motorcycle behind a very big guy, and you're hanging onto his stomach, and you don't feel, it's nice back there because you don't feel any of that dynamic pressure of the air coming and hitting you in the face. Okay, so this is what's happening at the top of the wing. So the pressure is lower than the bottom of the wing that doesn't have that protection of the wing. So it's getting the full force of air hitting it on the bottom of the wing. So now we have the pressure below the wing is greater than the pressure above the wing. Now, Bernoulli also told us that the pressure, when the pressure goes down, the velocity goes up. So the air above is also traveling faster now because the pressure is going down. But what we really care about is this pressure differential. So P above, okay, and P below. We know that P above is lower. We also know that a fluid wants to, it wants to find equilibrium in a volume, okay? So if you put a bunch of fluid out of a balloon, it's going to disperse itself into, into the room evenly. So you have high pressure below the wing, but you have 
low pressure above the wing. The air wants to get to that low pressure and find equilibrium. So what happens is there's almost a vacuum effect around the leading edge of the wing of air trying to get to that low pressure area. This has the effect, overall effect, of the higher pressure from the bottom of the wing pushing up on the wing and creating a vertical component of lift. So that is how Newton and Bernoulli help us explain lift on an aircraft. It's all about the shape of the wing, the airfoil, and the angle of attack splitting the air, causing that differential in pressure, creating both forces from Newton and Bernoulli and that net force upwards of lift. Hope you guys understood this all. If you have any questions, please comment below. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And as always, follow me on Instagram at part period time period pilot. And remember, get your free study guide. There's a link in the description below. Follow that. All you got to do is in your email. It's completely free and it'll help you prepare for the FAA written.